Hi everybody, it is Bibiana and welcome back to my channel. So I'm excited to come to you with an evening routine video and thank you very much for all the lovely feedback on my morning routine. I will link that video down below and one thing that was definitely requested was for an evening one because like I said, a lot of the things that help us out the next day have already been done the night before. So if you're new around here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. My name is Bibiana, I'm a wife and working mother to three little one. I have four year old twins and a toddler who's one, almost two now. I talk about my journey of faith, marriage and motherhood with a young and growing family. And also be sure to click the bell notification button so you'll be the first one to know when I post a new video. So without further ado, here is our evening routine and I hope you enjoy. Bye! So here we are arriving home from the twins after school sports clubs. I love how excited they get talking and sharing all the new skills they picked up that day. To avoid clutter in the corridor, bags and jackets are put in the cloakroom. <laughs> Here I am being that parent and telling my kids that I used to play basketball before they were born, but something tells me they'll be the ones schooling me in a few years. When we get home, everyone removes their outdoor shoes and I put the sports things away. There's always lots of kisses and cuddles, which I love. Oh, I got some lipstick on Caleb there. I then remove my shoes. I love how Caleb's come back for the basketball, even though I packed all the sports things away. I think he's hoping I don't see him sneaking away there with it. <laughs> Toddler life. So here I am working on the kids' after school snack. The vegetable and the cheese had already been prepared before, so all I have to do is add some yogurt and raisins. This is a great high energy snack for kids, especially if they're very active, and we call it banana sushi rolls, and you'll see why in a moment. Here it goes! Thank you, Mommy! Thank you, Mommy! The kids are pretty hungry when they get back from school, especially if they've had sports that day. So I allow them to have some screen time while they enjoy their favourite snacks. What do you think of the sushi rolls? Very delicious. Right, save some for your brother. You can't finish all of them, Libby. And I love using these suction trays for him, and he knows the draw by now. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty good at feeding himself and the great thing about this tray is he can't push it off the table. So screen time is over and not everyone's happy about it. Sorry Caleb, mama said no. I'm sorry baby, I'm sorry. I want the celery. You want the celery? You have to eat it buddy, it's good for you. <gasps> It'll make you big and strong. Really strong. Olivia, why have you not eaten your carrots? I don't want that. You want the carrots? Well, the carrots are really good for you, Livy. They're going to make your eyes so amazing. Do you want to be able to see in the dark? <gasps> Do you want that superpower? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be awesome. So if you eat your carrots, it'll make your eyes really, really good. You want to try it? Yeah. Okay, try it for mummy. Hey, yeah, they're not so bad, are they? Oh my gosh. Look at those muscles. Is that just for me and a bit of celery? And you're going to be faster than daddy and faster than mummy. <gasps> I'm way faster than you. Yeah, that's, that's actually very true. The kids have finished. The things you have to say to get kids to eat their veg. And Caleb has done too. And what is that in his hair? Oh, food, of course. <laughs> Twins are pretty good at tidying up after themselves. It definitely helps me out a lot. Never too early to start. So they're just putting their things in the dishwasher. Well done, buddy. I don't know about you, but my kids love dressing up. So it's almost become a daily routine where they slip out of their school uniform into their favorite fancy dress outfit. And yes, Caleb too, because they started giving that look that says, me too, mom. They pick their favorite toys and enjoy some free play time. Here they are playing with the larger Lego blocks, which is a lot safer than using the smaller Lego when their baby brother's around. While they're playing, I do a few errands on my to-do list. And number one is laundry which for a family of five is never ending. So like I mentioned before, we have a few cameras so I can keep an eye on them. I can hear the kids calling me, so I rush straight back. We can do anything, anything cuddle. We can do anything, anything cuddle. We can do anything, anything cuddle. They were calling me because they wanted me to watch their puppet show, which was so good and funny. I'm so proud of them. Well done. That was a great play, guys. Thank you for coming to our puppet. Please have a good day. And please subscribe 
Bye. Please press the like button and be there. Bye. Even though the twins do go to school outside the home, we homeschool as well. And I definitely see the benefit of doing both. Jump up. Good boy. Have I done one? Hi, good job. And even though they're only four, their confidence in reading, writing, and problem solving has really come a long way. Nice. Pa pa pa. I. Good job. Next page. So, me. Good job. Mama me. And what's that mark at the end of the me? What's that for? <coughs> Exclamation mark. You were close. It's exclamation, ex exclamation, exclamation mark. Exclamation. Good. So what does that mean when you see that? You, you shout with yeah, You can say it a little bit louder. And sometimes Caleb is happy playing by himself while I do the twins homeschool. And sometimes he wants to join in too. Mommy, Caleb, what are you Oh, oh no. There you go, buddy. So Caleb was getting quite bored there playing with his toys, so I found something else for him to do, and this is a great activity for little ones. They can work on their fine motor skills, dexterity, colours, and phonics as well. Good boy! Well done! That's pink. You pick something yellow. Yellow. Good job, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> Olivia, don't confuse him, sweetheart. What does that go? Cut, cut. Good job. Good job. Yay! I'm cut for Kayla. You're not sure about that one? You got a bit stuck on this one, didn't you? So what sound is this? Sit and her. Shh. Because let's check the sound map. Where's sh on the sound map? Shh. Shoe. Shoe. So that's a digraph, isn't it? Shh. Eh. And. Duh. So what's that? Shh. Eh. Duh. Shed. Good job, big girl. Well and done. three things in the shed. Well done. Mummy, look what I wrote. Okay, I just had to pause it there because you know me, I always want to keep things very real on this channel. So this is actually a very good homeschool day, I'll be honest, and even I was like, dang, this is going well. But yesterday's meltdown is still very fresh in my mind. The kids definitely have their days and that's understandable, they are only four and one year old. So in those situations, if homeschool is not going too well, I either take learning outside or I organise for somebody to help me watch the children by giving my other child individual one-on-one -on -one attention. Otherwise, I just call it a day. At the end of the day, I want my children to enjoy learning. And the amazing thing is you can work at their pace and it's really flexible. And I do prefer teaching the children myself because it's been a really amazing bonding experience. But it's also helped me be a lot more clued up on the curriculum in schools and knowing what they are and will be teaching our children in the future. We also use this time to discuss some memory verses we've been learning. Having kids who are smart or teaching them to count is great, but teaching them what counts is so much more important to us. Olivia K. Keep your telephone people and your lips from telling lies. Now we to check if you're right. Mummy, why did you put pay on this? I put two pegs because I made a mistake. Mummy can't spell very well. <laughs> Well, no, can we do a different one? Yeah, try any one you want. Okay, maybe I. Okay, who are you I'll testing? Do J, J, J. All right. We. So, now you do it for me. Okay. It is answered on the way. Choose a lie. Check if you're right. Jesus answers. I am the way and the truth and the life. Thanks to the Lord, his love and joy forever. <laughs> <laughs> Next is one of
from the kids' favourite part of the evening routine, which is bath time, which is usually filled with lots of giggles and laughter, but unfortunately sometimes tears too. <laughs> So I'm taking Caleb out of the bath a little bit earlier than usual just because he really wasn't feeling bath time today. He was definitely having one of those days. <laughs> the kids are now changed into their PJs and I'm just wondering how I'm going to clean up all this mess. I once heard having kids like cleaning up at a party you were not invited to. So it looks like Caleb's already got started there and it's time to tidy up. <laughs> Okay, so things are looking a lot more in order now, so it's time to get Caleb into his PJs. Sam usually gets home from work around 6pm depending on traffic and this is the first time the kids will be seeing their dad today so they always get so excited when they see his car pull into the drive. <laughs> And they always enjoy wrestling or playing horsey with their dad. I never know how Sam has the energy for this, but the kids love it. I am now working on dinner, which will literally be ready in 15 minutes. Because our weekdays are so busy, we are very big on meal prepping in this house. We're having fajitas tonight, which is definitely one of our favourite. So I find it easier to just cook on the weekend and then freeze all the food. And I bring it out the night before to defrost and then reheat and it's done. I then go around everybody to the table for dinner. We're just going to have to wait a couple of minutes for baby Caleb, who needed a little bathroom break. Badly. Woo! <laughs> Smelly poo poo. Please don't touch it. <laughs> This is yuck. This is, this is, this is, this is, I love how I say yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Thanks, baby. I appreciate the help. Teamwork. Teamwork. Go team. Ew. just realized we have no guacamole in the house. I totally forgot to get it when we did the supermarket shop. Complete mummy brain there. And what is fajita night without guacamole? Then I realized we already have most of the ingredients in the house. I'm just gonna whip up one real quick. And Olivia decided to join me in the kitchen. And this girl loves cooking and helping out in the kitchen. I'm not sure she got it from me. Mm, probably from Sam. I know there are many different ways of making this. I'm just using what I can find in the house. But for any other guacamole lovers out there, I would love to know what you add to your mix. So let me know in the comments below. So that's it done. It's time to eat. Thank you all for this wonderful day. Thank you for your faithfulness to this family. And we thank you for this time that we can spend together to share this meal. We pray that you please bless it. Lord, and remember those who don't have. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Delicious love. Yeah. Who's ready for Mexican night? Come and do yours. Me. Please. We aim to have dinner between 6 and 6.30 p.m. It all depends what time Sam gets back from work. But as long as it's not too late, we usually try and have dinner together as a family. And it's just a really fun time. The kids tell the most hilarious stories. We talk about our day and then we always love ending asking each other what the high point was of our day. Caleb is pretty good at feeding himself. He always wears these long sleeve bibs for dinner, especially if the food is quite messy. I'm pretty convinced we have our first left-hander in the family. And I love Love these suction silicone placemats, especially if he gets a little restless. And classic Caleb Idu, if there's something he doesn't like, he just offers it to somebody else. You like that, buddy? But he does love sweet bell peppers, and the great thing about these mats is they're microwave, oven, and dishwasher safe. And when it comes to brushing their teeth, it's a combination of us doing it for them and them also brushing for themselves. So while Sam and Olivia are in deep father-daughter conversation, it looked like little Caleb has wandered off and found one of his favourite bathroom items, which is toilet roll. It could have been a lot worse, usually he throws the whole roll down the toilet or unravels it around the whole house. 
And now I slip into something a little bit more comfortable. Like I mentioned before, a lot of preparation for the next day starts the night before. So first thing I get the twins uniform ready and because it's summer, this is their summer uniform. So Noah wears shorts and a short sleeve top and Olivia wears a gingham style dress. And I leave it all out for them, including their socks, and they're pretty good at getting themselves dressed. Uh, the joys of having tall children, we recently transitioned to 8 year old clothing, which is pretty much double their age, so I feel like I'm constantly having to buy a new uniform for them. I also find it easier to pick out baby Caleb's clothes the night before and have them all ready at the change station. I then pick out my shoes and clothes for work and just make sure they're all ironed. I used to help Sam iron his clothes as well but he prefers to do it on the weekend. I really need to start being that organised. But this is definitely one of my favourite summer dresses and it is a midi dress from Next Tall. So I'm back in the kitchen and next I work on the twin school snack. Because they already have a hot meal for lunch, I only need to make what they'll have for their break time, which is usually some vegetables and a sandwich. Now I do always prepare the twin snack bag the night before, which always includes water, but I do not always make everything from scratch. A lot of the time we buy and use packaged snacks, as long as they're healthy options, because let's face it, we don't always have that time. This is a packed lunch for myself and Sam for work tomorrow, which is basically just leftovers from dinner, and Sam likes his extra hot. So I do like to come down to a relatively king kitchen in the morning, so what I do is a very quick wipe down. Thankfully everyone tidied up after themselves after dinner, so all I have to do is sweep the floor and make sure the dishwasher's loaded and ready to go on overnight. Sometime after Isaac and Rebecca were married, Rebecca gave birth to twin boys. That's twins, so two children at the same time. Just like you guys. No, Well, you were, you were girl and Noah as a boy. Boys. So just before the kids go to bed, I make sure the twins have used the bathroom and I give Caleb a fresh nappy. Usually Sam does the children's bedtime stories before he tucks them into bed. Because he knows the children aren't going to see him in the morning before he leaves for work, he really enjoys his time with them. His father that can't see thinks he's the older brother. Yeah, yeah exactly. So his father Isaac thought Jacob was the older brother because he put the hair on his hand. And that's called deception. Yeah. Another word for tricking people is deception. And that's not good. Our, our class is reception. Reception, good girl. Reception and deception, those are what wow. kind of words? Rhyming. Rhyming words, good boy, no. So, guys, it's not good to trick people and to use deception. Bye. One more story. Nine. Oh, you want one more story? Nine. Nine. Oh, okay. Jesus' name? Amen. God in heaven. In my prayer. Keep me in your loving care. Be my garden, all I do. Blessing go to the mountain. Amen. So if Olivia's not using her silk or satin covered pillowcases that night, then we usually make sure her hair is wrapped. And there's always lots of hugs, cuddles and goodnight kisses. I feel like the kids do a lot to try and keep their dad in their room for as long as possible. And this is usually a time when Olivia has something very urgent to tell her dad as well. She really enjoys this sweet time with him. It's still quite bright when the kids go to bed because it's summer. I close the blinds and the curtains. I really need to get those blackout curtains. Okay, hey guys, so Sam is just helping the kids wind down with their bedtime routine and I'll admit I'm very very grateful for all his help. I could definitely not do this alone and our little motto is divide and conquer and that's probably used in the wrong context but we do like to divide tasks within the home but at the same time we do know that if one person is home a little bit later than the other we pick up for each other. It's not a case of you do this, I do that only but I really love the fact that we're able to work as a team on this. So I'm just going to use this time that I have it's a very short bit of time to reply to some comments and um, messages, emails, DMs, all that good stuff, edit some videos. It's a very short 
bit of time I have but I'm going to try and get that done now. That's the other reason why I do try and encourage you to hit the notification button because when the video goes out I do my best to respond within the first hour. As you can see life is a little a little hectic and I don't have a team it's just a little me but who knows maybe someday but yeah so I am working as hard as I can to reply. I'm not ignoring you. I'm saying it here because I do get some people repeat the message and just saying oh you know have you not seen my message and some of them are like some of y'all send essays to me which I don't mind definitely keep them coming I do love reading your messages and your encouraging ones too because they really help I guess they help keep me going because um it's not so easy putting out all this content but I do my best and I really am glad y'all are receiving it well so I do want to share a little something with you right now which is a book I've been reading because as you know me and Sam have been doing a book a month but there's another book that was recently sent to me which I'm reading in between our books and it's this one it's a little different from my usual read and it's by Judy Murray and this is a Penguin Random House publishing company book who are the sponsors of today's video so thank you very much for sponsoring today's family vlog but I do want to share it with you because actually I feel it's very relevant to my channel and to what we are about as parents as well. So this book is Judy Murray. I don't know if many of you know, I'm not sure if you can see her. It's actually Jamie and Andy Murray's mom. A lot of us know about the Murray brothers, but not many of us know about their mother. For me, it spoke so many volumes because I have young children now who are very into sports. I know the twins only four, but you can see their size. They're not your average four-year-olds. And most people do mistake them for six, seven-year-olds. I mean, Noah's really wearing eight-year-old clothes right now. So he's been doing really well in school. The teacher say things to our kids that they used to say to my parents when I was younger and why I'm saying that is because when I was a little younger your girl used to play basketball division one basketball I used to play which I'm rocking now I'm gonna lift it up Davidson women's basketball yep which is in America because I had that opportunity when I was about 18 or because I've been playing some sports when I was younger and my parents really kind of encouraged me in that area and so I get excited for them I'm not saying they'll go pro or anything but it's definitely been something that's been going in my head because they do enjoy tennis, especially Olivia. Noah's more into basketball, swimming. There's a lot of sports that they are doing, mainly taught by their father because he's very keen on teaching. But they do some after school clubs as well just to get their feet wet in different sports and see what they're gifted at and what they like. And so this book has been a real encouragement and inspiration for me as a mom to, I guess, think ahead as to how to prepare if the day comes that they want to pursue sports a little bit more seriously. And then they were never going to push our kids to go into any specific field or any specific um, academic field. Obviously, we want them to be successful and our standard of success is obviously doing what the law told them to do. And if that involves sports, then I want to be able to help them along the way. So one thing in this book it says is what happens when you find out you have an exceptional child? Do you panic, put your head in the sand or risk everything and jump in head first? As mother to tennis champion Judy Murray, she's an inspiration who has revolutionised British tennis. I think a lot of us would agree with that if we see the fact that her children are so successful. It's kind of funny, when you think about tennis, obviously we know the Williams sisters and we know the Murray brothers. And we don't realise, sometimes we forget that behind these successful and gifted children is, you know, parents who are obviously supporting them. And I think her story really resonated with me because she's a single mum and her kids got to that level of success. So it's almost like I felt I have no excuse because I know how difficult it is raising children and I have a husband who helps and I have so much respect for single moms who do it by themselves but if you feel oh no my kids can't achieve this or I can't achieve certain things I think this is definitely one of those books which can be a real kick and encouragement for a mom to really go out and pursue her dreams and pursue the dreams for her children as well because she faced everything especially as a woman especially in that day with so much sexism and everything so she was able to overcome that and she shares her journey here. When I first saw the book I thought is this about teaching our kids how to become like pro tennis players but the more I looked at it the more I realized her heart is more about teaching kids to just develop a love for sports in general. You know she knows, Judy Murray knows not everybody is going to become 
pro national athletes but at the end of the day she's showing you the importance of getting your kids active and so it's really helpful for parents who feel like they struggle with getting their kids outside and getting them active and we all know the benefits of engaging in sports especially competitive sports from everything from the health benefits and also just that level of competition just teaches you so many life skills and I feel I develop so many of my life skills from playing in very competitive sports and also my love for health and fitness as well. So it's called Knowing the Score, My Family and Our Tennis Story and it was a Sunday Times hardback bestseller and price wise it is $8.99 and it's actually out now. I definitely encourage you guys to check out this book and I will link all the details down below. So this is usually the time I pop onto my different social media platforms, especially if I've just uploaded a video so I can respond to comments, emails, DMs, or I use this time to plan content and edit videos. <laughs> Don't mind my dancing there. I do like listening to music at the same time, but I will spare you all my singing voice. And I do have a few girls I'm mentoring at the moment, and even though we talk a lot over Messenger, it's nice when I can find the time to meet up with them one-on-one -on -one or talk over the phone. And we use this time to encourage, pray, disciple, all that good stuff. And I just think there's so much beauty in having that relationship with someone and learning from them, because I definitely have learned from a lot of older and wiser women who have taught me a lot of things along the way. What are you doing, love? Some repairs. This is my husband's little man cave. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd check up on Sam and surprise, surprise, he's with the other woman in his life, which is his motorbike. Looks like he's just doing some repairs there because I know he's got a track day coming up. I may have married a petrol head. So it is the end of a long day, the kids are all in bed and Sam and I are having some adult time. So one fun thing we've definitely loved doing is reading a book together. We did used to watch a movie but I always fell asleep. We share our thoughts on the reading or we discuss what's on our mind or on our hearts. It's just a really sweet time. So I am now in bed, brushed, flossed and skincare routine done and now I'm ready to sleep. Ah, oh, I just remembered that I forgot to take the laundry out of the washing machine. This is when I usually debate. Option one, I empty the washing machine, knowing fully well I'll probably find something else to clean or sort out in the kitchen, including that cooker I didn't clean. Or option two, I stop feeling so guilty and go to bed. Remind myself that it is not the end of the world if the house is not perfect, that I do actually need to make sure I get some sleep, superwoman does not exist, and just give myself some grace, knowing tomorrow is a new day and his mercies are new each morning. I think I'll pick option two. And thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! I wanna be real with you. Whom have I to impress? You've shown me my wretchedness and met it with love and grace. So why do I complicate?